What's going on, everybody? K to the two here with the CCL D League playoffs, the semifinals. We did escape having to play our first round match because we got a bye because we were the best team in our division. Uh, we were tied for the best record in the league with Leo. We were both ten and three. However, he ended up having three more differential than us. I think. I, whatever. Anyway, we uh, we got pretty lucky uh, not to have to face Ellie uh, for a third time because she happens to always hacks us out, uh, except for the last time that we played. Um, so I'm glad that I don't have to deal uh, deal with that. Um, of course, like not to take anything away from her, like she still does really good prep and like she does shit against me. Uh, that's, wait, that sounded rude. That's not what I meant. Anyway, I'm really tired because I just worked from, uh, 6 to 2 today, and it is currently 2.44, so I literally just got home. My pants are unzipped. Let's zip them back up. Actually, no, we should probably leave them unzipped for this match because, you know, I'm gonna need a little bit of room to breathe because we are playing against Phantom for the third time this season. Both times we ended up pulling out with a victory. However, he did give us two of the, probably the closest matches we've had all season. Um, and he is definitely not somebody to sleep on. So, this is going to be, it's definitely going to be a match. So, let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what exactly I brought. So, the Garchomp is here, and this thing is my main one con. I believe I was sub... Swords Dance with Earthquake and Dragon Claw. So, of course, nothing to hit a Magnet Rise Clef Key, because why would you? Um, but it is my best win con by far because of the speed tiers that he has on his team, the fastest things being Arcanine and Zygarde at base 95, so I can just run speedy and I am running an earth plate this time I changed up my item every game this season or every game that we've played against phantom this season uh, in order to try and get them thinking uh, and hopefully give us giving us a little bit of extra damage is going to help us pick up some KOs that we wouldn't normally be able to get so that's gonna be Garchomp next up we have Rose Raid I've brought Rose Raid every single time and I think Rose Raid is very good at stopping the Finny and also at setting up spikes as the Dragalge comes in. Because every time we've played, Dragalge has been his switch in to Rose Raid, and because it's going to always be from Tapu Finny into Dragalge, uh, it means he's going to have the Misty Terrain up. So, what I did instead of bringing an Unreliable Sleep Powder, which is what I did last time, what I did this time is I threw Worry Seed on it because AV Dragalge seems to be his best way to deal with Rose Raid, or that that's at least what he's brought every time. Um, so Worry Seed would allow me to live a Draco Meteor, uh, synthesis up, and be able to 1v1, not necessarily 1v1 the Dragalge, however it would allow me to get all my layers of spikes up, which against his team is really nice because the only hazard removal he has is the Tapu Finny with Defog, so that's going to be very nice. Next up we have a Scarf Jirachi. Scarf Jirachi really saved me in the last game and I really wanted it again this time, uh, just because Heart Stamp is really spammable against his team and Iron Head is really spam spammable against his team outside of Arcanine, which a defensive Arcanine would be really nice, however the first game uh, I brought an offensive special attacking Jirachi, so he might be running a bit more offense, a little bit more def maybe, so then it's not taking on physical Scarf Rachi as well. Uh, next up we have Mantine. Mantine's just here to have Scald, and literally it just does Mantine things. Scald, Defog, Toxic, Roost, I think that's what I had, maybe I had Haze, I don't quite remember, uh, but like I said, is here to do man time things. Um, next up, we have the same exact Sylveon that I brought every single time, and that is Q 
Cute Charm with Moonblast instead of Pixelate Hyper Voice because he does have a Como O that every time uh, I bring in Sylveon and his Pixelate Hyper Voice, like let's say I was Calm Mind, Wish Protect, Hyper Voice, I can't touch a Soundproof Como O. And if he substitute, he gets free setup. And that's the absolute last thing that I want to stop a Sylveon sweep because a Sylveon sweep is very very doable against his team. That being said, uh, Moonblast still does quite a quite an owl against his team, so Calm Mind has really broken through a lot of his team in the last couple matches that we've gone up against each other. And lastly we have uh, Raikou which is 4 attacks and has some some things. I forget uh, exactly what item I had, but it's gonna help me to Volt Switch around because nothing that he wants to switch into uh, is going to want to be able to take on Garchomp very well, so I can just Volt Switch out, go hard into Garchomp, and then that's basically that's basically it. So, uh, I just remembered it is Shookaberry in case he has the uh, Thousand Arrows on the Zygarde, and like if he wants to try and set up on us, then he can't really get away with that. So, let's go ahead and get right into the game. This is our first playoff match in quite a long time, actually. So, I was feeling pretty nervous heading into this game, and I'm just going to lead off with Raikou for the reason being that I, um, uh, that I explained earlier, that I just want to Volt Switch out. Uh, on whatever he wants to bring in. Garchomp forces it out and I get a big hit off. So, we are going to go straight for the Volt Switch. He doesn't want his Finny taking any damage. We go for the Volt Switch. He brings in the Dragalge and now he has the Garchomp right in front of it. He doesn't want to take an Earthquake. He goes into his Tapu Finny. We see that it does 43%, which is very nice damage. He can't take two of those when he comes back in. And uh, he goes for Nature's Madness here. I wanted a Rose Raid knowing that he couldn't really do much. Like, even Ice Beam is doing less than 50% to a max HP Rose Raid, which is what we are. Uh, so Nature's Madness was his best play in order to get off as much damage as possible. We are Black Sludge, we do have Synthesis, so we can take this on relatively uh, easily. So we're going to go for that Synthesis, he's going to go for an Ice Beam. He's going to get a little bit of Leftovers recovery uh, through this exchange but he is running out of options here. So we are going to start setting up our spikes. and. Getting up all three layers of spikes is going to be very, very nice for his team. As he's going to get up one layer, and that's about the, the threshold where I'm going to stop him from doing that, because I don't want him doing that anymore. Uh, he's going to get up two layers, and that's very important. Being able to um, force his Klefki to attack rather than go for extra spikes is going to help out a hell of a lot uh, in order to... Uh, keep Garchomp healthy, keep uh, Sylveon, Raikou, all of them benefit from only two layers up rather than three layers this game. So I'm glad that I wanted the Garchomp when I did, and we get a sub up as he goes for the Reflect, which means I have to go for Sword Stance here in order to kill him with the EQ. Uh, I knew he had it because he already had already shown Light Screen a uh, few turns before. So uh, of course going for the sub might have been kind of an overprediction, and it's cost me a little bit of health on Garchomp, but that's alright, he didn't switch out, uh, he didn't really have anything to switch into, and Sword Stance is going to really, really help uh, pressure him to go into his Mimikyu. So that's basically the only thing he's going to be able to have. I know that because he is dual screens, uh, he isn't going to have Magnet Rise, and down goes Klefki. Uh, to the plus two Earthquake, even through the Reflect, that is because Earthplate uh, gave that little extra bit of damage in order to help out there. So, right here, this uh, this Mimikyu, I've realized, Mimikyu is really, really scary. So, in it comes, we're going to go into Mantine, it's going to do 43%, and that was a Life Orb play rough. So we're going to go for the Roost here as he goes for Storage Dance. Um, it was kind of a 50-50 there. I knew that if he did have Sword Stance, uh, he could go for it. However, I felt that roosting up uh, 
meant that no matter what, he's going to take two life orb hits uh, before I got a scald off, and I always have the chance in order to get the burn on the following turn. Uh, so that is what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for the scald, break his disguise, and also uh, potentially get a burn. And I know I can live a play rough because the first one did 42%, and at plus two it'll do about 80% or so. And uh, we're going to see here. Play rough does uh, about 76, and he's going to take a life orb hit, and we break his disguise and no burn. So that's kind of uh, kind of scary now because. It means what I have to do here is pretty much hope for him to uh, to miss in order for us to get a burn or at least some extra damage to where um, Jirachi can uh, pretty much live most of the time with the HP investment that I have with the two layers of spikes up. Um, if he is adamant, it's basically just a roll in order to take out Jirachi, so we'd have to hope again for something to go our way but he misses the play rough and we get the scald off but there is no burn so he has three life orb hits in him uh that uh that miss really did kind of matter because it changed up my uh my line of play over the next few turns uh it meant that instead of saving garchomp for the end game like i was planning it would have meant I had to go into that right away, make him take uh, rough skin damage, and also uh, life orb damage in order to take him out. Potentially not take us out with a shadow sneak, but there was no way we were going to live at plus two shadow sneak. And then also sack something else off. So it would have been up to the combination of Scarf Arachi, Flinching Things, and Calm Mind Sylveon uh, to bring us to the victory. Uh, however, he does miss. We are going to be able to have a chance to kill this thing with our Jirachi. However, Shadow Sneak just straight up kills us. Uh, that did end up being a roll. Uh, it was about a 50-50 roll, and he ended up getting it, so it's not that big of a deal. Because he does go down to another Life Orb hit, and we still have our Garchomp sitting right here. Uh, looking extra spicy against the rest of his team. It outspeeds everything. And I knew um, that Raikou would be able to get off a big hit uh, against pretty much anything uh, that he wanted to come in with, except for Dragalge. But because I knew that um, Garchomp was such a threat to his team, I didn't think he would go into uh, Dragalge. I felt mainly that he would go into Finny or Zygarde. Zygarde if it had a uh, Haban Berry or something. Um, or Finny, uh, knowing that he can live an EQ and fire off like an Ice Beam in order to threaten me out. So, he is going to choose to go into Zygarde, and right here, my only play here is to click HP Ice uh, and 2 a KO this thing. Uh, so, we are going to see that he actually has a Yachi Berry, and he's Dragon Dance. So, pause it. Okay. Because we only allowed him to get up two layers of spikes, this is not a roll. If he got up three layers of spikes, this would have been a roll in order to potentially take us out with Thousand Arrows. And with our Shookaberry, we are going to actually be able to live on 7%, which is the exact amount of one extra layer of spikes. And oh my gosh, that, uh, that really really made an impact because that Zygarde, if it was Iron Tail, would have been able to um, sweep through us if it hit its Iron Tail against Sylveon. Otherwise, I would have had to rely on uh, Garchomp getting a crit or two. Uh, and that's going to be that's gonna be the end of Zygarde, and Raikou is still here. So, thankfully, Shuka on Raikou is coming through in order to save us there. And he brings in the Arcanine here. Uh, I'm not sure why he didn't go into Dragalge, uh, because it would have not taken too much damage. Uh, but he does indeed go into Arcanine. I know I can't save this because it'll die to the spikes when I come back in, so I'm just going to click T-Bolt, get off as much damage as possible, potentially get a Paralysis. Uh, and we're going to go for that Thunderbolt. It doesn't kill... Uh, doesn't get the para, he kills us with Incinerate, and we come back in with our Garchomp. All we gotta do is click EQ, uh, Tapu Fini gets 2 it KO'd from where it's at, 
Uh, Dragology would dry, dry, <laughs> probably. Um, Arcanine dies. Uh, so EQ is 100% our play there. Now he's gonna go into Tapu Fini here, and if he makes the double into his Dragology here, he pretty much picks up a kill. Uh, however, uh, that would win us the game because he wouldn't be getting enough leftovers recovery in order to get back into a range of health to live in EQ after the spikes because it would be at 26%. So my easiest uh, switch into Sylveon, or my easiest play is the switch into Sylveon. It keeps the 100% win intact because I do have that Earth Plate. And what I am going to do is I'm going to try to set up and win this game with Sylveon. Uh, it was kind of, kind of risky. Uh, I could have just gone for the Moonblast in order to get off damage to keep the Finny at a range of health to where it would have died. However, I felt that his Dragalge was Assault Vest like it was the first two games. And I could set up as long as I got to plus two before Dragalge came in. And as long as Finny stays below 70% uh, health, I will be able to take it out with an EQ after the, the spikes. So I'm going to force him to uh, basically switch out here or lose the game to a potential uh, Sylveon. So we do get to plus one. If we got the plus two before the Dragalge came in, it would have been able... No, no, never mind. That is a spec Dragalge. I was not expecting that. Uh, so it catches, uh, catches us off guard. However, because the Tapu Fini is at 62%, it will come back in at about 38%, 37%, somewhere around there. And Garchomp comes in. Because it is Earth Plate Max Attack, EQ is going to be able to pick up the kill on Finny. Uh, even a max HP, max defense Finny, it would be able to kill. So, Garchomp is going to be able to come in, win us the game, picking up five kills. The other uh, kill going unassigned because the Mimikyu ended up killing... No, four kills, sorry. I misspoke. Garchomp gets four kills this game, Raikou with one, and Mimikyu killed itself. So... We pull out a really, really close game, really good game. Phantom giving us three of the closest games uh, that I could have asked for. Um, really competitive matches uh, coming from him. And I had to give it to him that five fairies, five dragons, and an Arcanine team, which is what he had, was A, the best meme of the season, and B, actually surprisingly not as bad of a team as I thought it was. Uh, was on paper uh, starting out the season. Just goes to show that Fairy and Dragon are two of the absolute best types in the format. So that's going to be it for me today. <sighs> it is so exhilarating to be in a championship game once again after it's been it's been over two years since the last championship game that I was in. So if you guys are excited to see my game against Leo, go ahead and leave a like on this video and make sure to check out our championship game against Leo, which will be uploaded, if not tomorrow, the day after. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, and I will see you guys next time.